Our next speaker is Dr. Andy uh, Penrose of Cadence Design Systems. He's a software engineer and group director. He's going to speak about AI and Gen AI for verification productivity. Um, he's, as yeah, so I say, he's a software engineer and group director in the system verification group at Cadence. During his 20 years in EDA, he has focused on clock tree optimization, SOC pre and post silicon debug, and now AI accelerated verification. Okay, so um, going to talk to you today about AI and Gen AI for verification productivity. Why both? Uh, I want to talk about both the AI tools that we have available today and also uh, very keen to talk about the Gen AI work that we're doing for the tools of the future. In terms of why talk about verification productivity, um, thanks Andy for setting me up nicely on this. Um, as well as what's happened in the past, we see the uh, productivity challenge increasing in the future. Our analysis suggests a 100x increase in design complexity over the coming decade, and as many as four times the number of design starts per year over the coming decade. And to solve that, we can't simply hire our way out of it. We're already hearing about challenges in recruiting engineering talent, uh, particularly in verification. So we need to find another way to address that. Looking back over the decades, EDA has come up with a number of, uh, well, the industry has come up with a number of ways uh, to move forward on this. Automation, cell-based design, design reuse. And we see AI-driven verification as the next big opportunity to get a um, significant change in productivity. Looking back at the last slide, you'll see that 10X isn't really gonna be enough. So we're looking for a more than 10X increase in productivity using these AI-driven tools. In terms of Cadence's overall AI strategy, um, we have our traditional engines that you'll be familiar with running on accelerated compute. And we're building, or well, have built on top of that, a layer of AI optimization. So I'll talk more about the Verisian platform in a minute. And on top of that, we're building a layer of generative AI, which I'll talk more about. To the side, we have uh, the Cadence Jedi infrastructure. Uh, one thing that became very obvious when we embarked on looking at generative AI for EDA was that it doesn't make sense for each generative application to think about what LLM should I use? How am I going to access GPU resource to run it? So we want to centralize that and provide that as a service to all of the Cadence tools for their generative AI components. So that would be the, the role of Jedi in that case. One thing that's important when we're talking about these AI-driven solutions is that we're not looking to replace the engineer. We're looking to catalyze the engineer. AI algorithms, especially when task complexity is low and data volumes are high, can be very useful at processing data. But when the data volume is small and task complexity is higher, the human characteristics of intuition, judgment, and experience are still very, very valuable. So we want to combine those, get the best of both, and have AI-driven EDA that accelerates the human in the loop. Now, I've talked very generally about AI strategy. Obviously, this is verification futures, so I want to bring it back to verification. So this is the Verisium AI-driven verification platform. Uh, it's built on top of our existing engines, uh, and I'm going to touch on most of these boxes in the presentation today. Running right the way across, we have Verisium Manager, which some of you will know as vManager, our tool for planning, running regressions, and coverage analysis. And at the top, Verisium Debug, which some of you may know by its old name, Vindago, our key tool for debug. All the little boxes are the apps that we have within the Verisium platform, uh, which I will touch on today. Just to say that the green is currently available apps, Blue box, the two blue boxes are new, and the orange boxes are work in progress. There were a lot of little boxes on that slide, so rather than go through them all in detail, and I think actually the in the handout, the presentation does go into some more detail on some of these, but uh, doesn't quite fit in the time available. So I've divided it up into three major AI flows for verification. When we ask people where they spend most of their time, 
uh, in verification, one thing that comes up again and again is debug and regression analysis. 70% um, of time typically goes on that. That's a really big target for us to improve productivity. Uh, so we have a selection of apps, all of which can be used individually, but actually work together really well as a flow to address that challenge. Starting with a regression that contains failures, you would be wanting to triage those to find out how many real um, issues you have to resolve. That can be very time consuming. Uh, so we developed auto triage, which integrates with Verisium Manager to um, analyze the test failures, provide some bucketization into different bugs, uh, into different bug categories, and then present that to the user for, um, for checking. And any alterations, any edits the user makes to that are then fed back into that model to improve the bucketization in future runs. And we've heard back that that, in, uh, that can give a three times reduction in post-regression failure triage time. Having, having done that bucketization and determined how many real bugs you have to go after, the typical thing would be to look for causative change. What, is, what has caused that failure? Um, binary chop would be a typical way of doing that, but it's not the most effective way of getting to the answer uh, as quickly as possible. So we have pinned down as a tool to assist with that. This uses a machine learning model for bug prediction, essentially looking at the changes between the passing and the failing regression runs and looking for risky or potentially concerning changes um, or code that's changed frequently by many people Things that are risk, um, high, uh, things that highlight a risk from those changes. Pin down doesn't just run one uh, one experiment; it can run configurably run a number of experiments uh, on the farm. So that combination of multiple experiments and uh, targeting based on risk enables it to quickly go to the most likely changes either side to try and identify the causative changes um, that result in that failure. We've had, had an example where in six hours it was able to uh, to highlight the, the causative changes rather than one week uh, without to debug 95 failures. When we know the causative change, um, we might want to look at the differences. Uh, and of course, more things can change the, uh, the nature of a simulation other than just the RTL, and not all RTL changes actually impact the simulation. So we have CodeMiner as a means of analyzing those changes. It actually works at the uh, Excelium snapshot level. So it's actually looking at the internal data structures that are going to impact the simulation uh, to provide information on the real differences that have impacted that run. That's not enough. Typically, we would open up the waveform viewer, and that can be very laborious. So we have WaveMiner in place to assist with that, this AI-assisted debug. WaveMiner is analyzing the waves from the passing and the failing runs and looking for behaviors. So a behavior maybe that is in the failing run that's not in the passing run, or a, a behavior in the passing run that's missing from the failing run. With those anomalous behaviors um, and with the waveform analysis, we can provide signals and time points to give the designer a real head start into uh, root causing that issue. Uh, and we've had feedback that that can provide up to 30 times faster root causing. So either independently or working together, we have this set of apps for our AI-driven debug. I want to move on to talk about simulation and Verisium Sim AI. Uh, Qualcomm came to Cadence Live recently and gave us this quote. We observe as much as 20x reduction in CPU cycles and find SimAI very useful for hard to hit cross coverage bins. So, so what is it? And what's it doing? Uh, some of you may know Verisim SimAI by its old name of Excellium ML. Um, we've continued to invest in it and added new capabilities this year. So we felt it deserved a bit more prominence, um, bringing it out of Excellium's shadow. SimAI is targeting your constrained random tests. Uh, you, you would do a baseline run, uh, at which point it would be observing the values the constrained random variables get, 
and the coverage that comes from those tests. It then builds a model for how to um, how to guide the constraint ran the constraint resolution process to provide more interesting values to those variables. So that on the next run, we explore more interesting spaces more quickly. This avoids the situation where you run tests over and over again, simply to occasionally get into interesting places in your in your coverage space. And by getting there more quickly, you get a regression compression, getting this approximately the same coverage, running many fewer tests. So although 20x is possible, two to six x is a, a more realistic range for that. Now, one of the new features we've added this year is coverage maximization. Uh, and this is interesting. So if I've got a hole that I've not uh, a bin that we've not been able to hit before, how do we how do we get there? Now, machine learning is very good at learning from past examples, but that hole's never been hit. That's so what are we going to do? We've added some new analysis to find related bins um, that relate to that hole. And having done that, we can then use SimAI to target those related bins so we hit them much more frequently, giving us a much greater chance uh, of hitting that hole and getting that last incremental step towards uh, coverage closure. In the graph there, you can see that with SimAI, well, the, the two lines start off the same because SimAI is learning. But then when it kicks in, you see there's a step change and that last piece of incremental coverage, uh, additional piece of incremental coverage is gained. Okay, dealt with debug, I've dealt with simulation, formal. Uh, I'm gonna talk quickly about the smart proof automation framework that underlies formal AI. As many of you will know, uh, our, our Jasper product contains not one, but a number of state-of-the-art engines improving properties and determining which engine to use can have a big impact on the runtime. So in order to, in order to make the best use of this, uh, firstly, we need to capture profiling data, um, to understand which engine and which engine settings work best for a given property. Now, the simplest thing we can do with this data is prove caching. If nothing has changed, if the cone of influence is unchanged from when we proved it last time, we can simply reuse the proof. If things, has cha if things have changed, as they will, um, we can build a model to help us understand what engine and engine settings would be most appropriate for new properties or properties um, in, in a changed environment. And using that, we can uh, get more proofs more quickly. So the table here shows a baseline where we uh, are able to prove 53% of properties in a given time window. But with smart proof, that goes up to 71. So good in proof in throughput. So that's a quick run through some of our existing AI tools uh, for verification productivity. I wanted to touch quickly on a couple of new tools uh, for resource optimization before I go on to talk about Gen AI. With autofocus, we're aiming to avoid the problem of running tests you don't need to run. So you have changes that are made and you have a regression. But the regression is going to have a lot of tests in it that test the areas that are unchanged. So in order to cut down on the number of CPU cycles, the compute cost for running regressions, we want to focus the, the uh, regressions that we run around the changes that we've made. So what Autofocus is doing is taking a baseline run, understanding the, uh, the coverage that the different tests provide, then doing an analysis on the changed design so that we can provide uh, a ranked list of tests that focuses on those changes, providing an optimized regression. The other new tool I want to talk about quickly is Smart Run. Uh, the goal of Smart Run is to provide the fastest turnaround time for a regression and improve uh, verification throughput. So this integrates with Verisium Manager. Um, if you think about your regression, you can think about it as a, a rectangle where one axis is the time taken and the other axis, there's a number of compute slots on the farm that are used. We want to minimize that box. Now in a world of homogeneous farms, directed tests and IPs that change very little, this would be quite straightforward. A test would probably take about the same time as it did last time it was run. 
in a world of constrained random with heterogeneous compute farms and IPs that change often, this becomes much more difficult. So in order to solve this box packing problem, we need to learn a model uh, for how long these tests take so we can predict test duration, then provide a report on different settings that the user might want to try uh, to optimize their regression uh, for both turnaround time and compute farm use. I was actually speaking to a customer last week who had been trying this out and had seen a huge reduction in the number of slots they needed to book on their farm by using this analysis uh, without impacting their, uh, their turnaround time. So that covers the existing AI tools that we have in our Verisium platform. I'm glad I've left myself just enough time to get on to what I really want to talk about, which is the work we're doing on generative AI for verification. Now, first up, we really need to tackle a big challenge, um, LLN expectations and reality. So as we heard earlier, yeah, there's a, we know ChatGPT can do, or other LLMs are available. We know ChatGPT can do great things and come up with some really um, unexpectedly good uh, outputs. Unfortunately, that expectation doesn't always live up to what we need. So I can ask my LLM to generate me properties for my round robin arbiter. You feed it into the bot, then the magic happens. Uh, not always what we want. Um, this looks good. It looks like a looks like a good SVA property, but a property whose precondition is all three channels being granted at the same time is probably not the property we want. Not very useful. So how do we build useful EDA tools based on generative AI when we have these kind of uh, hallucination problems? So I want to cover a couple of concepts that have come out of the, um, the work globally on generative AI, about how we can mitigate hallucinations using retrieval augmented generation, or RAG, and LLMs judge. In the last example, we gave the LLM a prompt and it gave a response. Um, um, I think there have been you know, many, many examples of hallucinations from LLMs. We can improve upon this by providing some context, um, by retrieving from a known good database some, uh, some examples. This actually mirrors how we work. Um, if you ask me a question, I don't know the answer, I'm going to look it up in a trusted source text, I'm going to read that text, synthesize my answer to your question. A junior engineer is given uh, maybe some tests to write. They're probably going to look at other tests in the project or previous projects and use those examples to synthesize the new output that they need to write. And it's the same with the LLM. So that's one thing we can do, but we can do more. Each of these steps round the uh, round this triangle, we can ask the question: Is it a good step? The information, the examples we fetch from our database, are they really relevant to the prompt? The response from the LLM, does it really answer the question that was asked? And I think one of the most important is this metric at the bottom: groundedness. Is the LLM response grounded in the context from the database? In the response, do I see things that I can then tie back to the information I've got from my known good source? Because if I can, that's great. Anything that I can't tie back to the context from the database is something the LLM has made up. And that's where hallucinations will come in. Now, one thing that's come out of the research recently is that we can actually use an LLM to answer these questions of relevance and groundedness. This LLM as judge or sometimes called reflection, getting the LLM to reflect on its output and see if it's a good answer to the question. I think these will be very useful techniques as we move forward to build robust systems based on this technology. Another, another concept that's very important is feedback. So uh, I'm going to use this uh, example of a generative AI flow for SVA generation. So we can imagine putting a design and test bench, natural language spec into some kind of LLM powered uh, co-pilot, and that will generate properties. Um, 
Now we could just give those back to the user, but we're an EDA company, we have tools and we understand the value of those tools. So let's use them. We can pass those properties into Jasper and, and do a range of checks, syntax issues, equivalence. Do I already have this property in my set? And there's a number of other things we can do to check. If it's a good property, great. If we find problems, we can feed that back and make sure that we're uh, improving um, as we go through and use that in future. And I haven't managed to fit it in on the slide, but user feedback is also very important too. So when we've been through that tool-based qualification, give the property to the user and have them say, is that is that the property I wanted? Um, and again, changes that are made there can help feed back into, into that process. So that combination of tools in the loop and feedback is going to be very important. So I've talked about those concepts. I just want to talk about a couple of projects that we have ongoing. Um, as a, we'll, uh, we're looking forward to uh, moving forward to deliver the tools of the future. So one is Verisium Spec Miner. So this is um, really born out of the concept that a specification, or more likely a range of specifications for a hardware project, is a large body of natural language, which up until recently has not been amenable to automation. Using the advances in NLP and particularly LLMs, we can derive from those specs a number of concepts, hierarchy, classification of what is and is not relevant to functional verification, descriptions of the hardware elements involved, to help annotate the spec, um, to link any existing verification plan to, the, to that spec. Once we have these concepts, uh, we envisage building a range of specialized LLM agents with access to a database of past projects so that we can then generate new verification collaterals, SVA, B plan, potentially UVM. Now that's a very grand concept um, and we expect to be working on it for some years. But we're, the team are back at base today working on delivering initial versions of some of these capabilities as soon as possible so that we can continue to get feedback and move this forwards. Another project we're looking into is the use of um, co uh, Verisium Copilot, the capabilities that we might build into our tools in this regard. And we think it's important that any chat interface be integrated into the tool, so it's there in the tool that the uh, engineer is using all the time. That chat interface would then talk to the JEDI infrastructure I mentioned earlier, using LLM, using RAG, with a database that might contain user documents, cadence documents, design material. Um, I've mentioned the spec miner case. The scripting case, LLMs are quite good at writing uh, Tickle, but they don't necessarily have the knowledge of the specific commands for a given tool. By putting our documentation in there, we can provide that knowledge and generate Tickle scripts that might take quite some time to generate if you have to go back and forth with the documentation in order to do that. So, uh, Jasper Tickle there is an example. Now, the documentation search is an interesting case. Um, I think documentation search with LLMs is now a quite well understood concept, but our documentation is not run of the mill documentation. Um, we particularly looked at the, our VIP documentation. Um, VIPs are complicated because the protocols they represent are inherently very complicated, full of technical jargon, very unlike a lot of traditional documents very long documents also. So we set about trying to answer the question of, is this technology going to work in that use case? Does it really provide good Q&A over these very uh, lengthy technical documentation? Uh, and to start with, the answer was no. So we've done some work to improve upon that, tune that, find the best practices to get better results, and that's looking more promising. And, and also debug, and we mentioned debug earlier as an area where a lot of time is spent. So providing a more natural language interface to using our existing debug tools would have great advantage. 
So in summary, I just wanted to come back to this slide, which I think I've covered all of now, just really as a means to um, say, if you remember one thing from this talk, um, just remember that if you want to, uh, when you're talking to Cadence about um, AI-driven verification, that Verisium is the platform to talk about. Thank you very much. Bye. And we do have a little bit of time for just one question. If we've got a question for for Andy, um, let me. That won't work. So I'm going to run, so we can record the question online. There you are. Introduce yourself. Try now. Hello. Hi, myself, Nayan. Uh, I'm from Imagination Technologies. I think nowadays lots of companies engage into like uh, designing CPU, GPU, AI related stuff, and they're using like a, a random instruction generators, which is not part of, uh, say, UVM test bench. It says it's generated the stimulus and then it's provided to UVM test bench. How this um, CMI can help into improving coverage into that case? Um, it's a good question. I will I'll have to uh, consult with colleagues and get back to you on that. Okay, well, John told me. Well, Andy. Andy. Uh, Andy, uh, one of the fears of using things like ChatGPT or anything else is about IP leakage. How will EDU vendors ensure that designs and code do not leak outside their trusted, supported EDA environment? That is a, a great question and reminds me that I forgot to say something earlier during one of my earlier slides. So I talked about the, LL and the JEDI infrastructure for providing LLM services. So that is built to be an on-prem deliverable solution with LLMs running within the customer's trusted environment. So that is uh, keeping all that data in, within their firewall. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Thank you very much. Thank you.